John Byrne Lester Warren, 3rd Baron de Tabley was an English poet, numismatist, botanist and an authority on bookplates. Portrait of Lord de Tabley, by John Hanson Walker Lord de Tabley's bookplate, engraved by Charles William Sherborne he was eldest son of George Fleming Lester. Lord de Tabley, by his wife Caterina Barbara, second daughter of Jerome, Count de Salisalio. The young Warren, as he then was, was educated at Eton from 1847 to 1851, in the Reverend. Edward Coleridge's house, and then at Christ Church, Oxford, where he took his degree in 1856 with second-class honours in classics, law, and modern history. In the autumn of 1858 he went to Turkey as unpaid attaché to Lord Stratford de Redcliffe. In 1860 he was called to the bar from Lincoln's Inn. He was commissioned as a part-time lieutenant into the Cheshire Yeomanry and unsuccessfully contested mid-Cheshire in 1868 as a liberal. After his mother died and his father's remarriage in 1871 Warren removed to London, where he became a close friend of Tennyson. Tennyson once said of him, he is Faunus, he is a woodland creature. From 1877 until his succession to the barony and estates in 1887, Warren was lost to his friends, assuming the life of a recluse. It was not until 1892, five years after becoming Lord de Tabley, that he returned to London life and enjoyed a renaissance of reputation and friendship. During the later years of his life, Tabley made many new friends, besides reopening old associations, and he seemed to be gathering around him a small literary company when his health broke. And he died at Ride on the Isle of Wight in his 61st year. He is buried at St. Oswald's Church, Lower Pover in Cheshire. Although his reputation will live almost exclusively as that of a poet, Tabley was a man of many studious tastes. He was at one time an authority on numismatics, he wrote two novels, published A Guide to the Study of Book Plates and the fruit of his careful researches in botany was printed posthumously in his elaborate flora of Cheshire. Poetry, however, was his first and last passion, and to that he devoted the best energies of his life. Lord de Tabley's first impulse towards poetry came from his friend George Fortescue, with whom he shared a close companionship during his Oxford days, and whom he lost, as Tennyson lost Hallam, within a few years of their taking their degrees. Fortescue was killed by falling from the mast of Lord Droy at his yacht in November 1859, and this gloomy event plunged Tabley into a deep depression. Between 1859 and 1862 he issued four little volumes of pseudonymous verse, in the production of which he had been greatly stimulated by the sympathy of Fortescue. Once more he assumed a pseudonym, his preterita bearing the name of William Lancaster. In the next year he published Eclogues and Monodramas, followed in 1865 by Studies in Verse. These volumes all displayed technical grace and much natural beauty, but it was not till the publication of Philoctetes in 1866 that Tabley met with any wide recognition. Philoctetes bore the initials M.A., which, to the author's dismay, were interpreted as meaning Matthew Arnold. He at once disclosed his identity, and received the congratulations of his friends, among whom were Tennyson, Browning, and Gladstone. In 1867 he published Orestes, in 1870 Rehearsals and in 1873 Searching the Net. These last two bore his own name, John Lester Warren. He was somewhat disappointed by their lukewarm reception, and when in 1876 The Soldier of Fortune, a drama on which he had bestowed much careful labor, proved a complete failure, he retired altogether from the literary arena. Book plate from poems, dramatic and lyrical it was not until 1893, that he was persuaded to return, and the immediate success in that year of his poems, dramatic, and lyrical, encouraged him to publish a second series in 1895, the year of his death. The genuine interest with which these volumes were welcomed did much to lighten the last years of a somewhat somber and solitary life. His posthumous poems were collected in 1902. The characteristics of Tabley's poetry are preeminently magnificence of style, derived from a close study of Milton, sonority, dignity, weight, and color. His passion for detail was both a strength and a weakness, it lent a loving fidelity to his description of natural objects, but it sometimes involved him in a loss of simple effect from over-elaboration of treatment. He was always a student of the classic poets, and drew much of his inspiration directly from them. His ambition was always for the heights, a region naturally icebound at periods, but always a country of clear atmosphere and bright, vivid outlines. See an excellent sketch by Edmund Goss in his Critical Kit Kats. An extract of what Goss wrote, a pastoral Venetian school Arcadian spaces of great grass arise, studded with roe deer and wild strawberries, who teases at the button of his cloak. A squirrel lies their lovers from an oak, in a fair meadow set with tulip heads. 
a vol of torrent, broken in grey threads. And up behind in a still orchard close in millions, russet green and amber rose, such colour as the morning brings the skies, infinite cadence of ethereal dyes. Quaint pastoral Arcadia, where our set earth has not held thy fabled sunsets yet, two of de Tabley's sisters. Eleanor Lady Layton and Mariel Bathurst. Thanks for watching.